All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming through and joining us on Aspiration Inspiration, where, you know, as always, we try to aspire to inspire before we expire. And today we have an amazing guest with us today. I, I told him before we just started, I told him I'm a bit starstruck today because I'm chatting to, me being a martial artist, I'm chatting to one of the best martial artists we have currently in the country, if not the continent, if not the world. Um, we're chatting to troublemaker Faiz Jacobs today. Thank you so much for joining us, Faiz. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so so we, you know, as as I would have told you in the brochure, we are just trying to push the Cape Flats narrative. We are so, when people hear Cape Flats, they think about, you know, gangsterism, the drugs, they think about, you know, all the socioeconomic issues that we are facing. And, you know, the thing that also st stood out for me in asking you to join me today is, you know, being the EFC bantamweight champion, uh, when you won that fight, um, you said something, you said that, you know, where you come from, being from just when people become, or, 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 or the youth become gangsters and they become drug addicts and stuff, but you became a world champion. And um, I just thought this is an incredible story to share. And I thought I should maybe have a few words from you. But before we get into that, I just want to share my screen with you. And maybe you can start us off with, um, with this moment and how you are, you know, being where you're from. And uh, what this moment felt like to you. Oh, okay. After my heart championship round, we go to the judges' scorecard for their decision. Judge Bell scores the bout. 49. I still don't know how you took that rip shot though and so won this fight. I felt it. I felt that shot to the ribs, yeah. It uh, knocked my wind out. If you look at the at the round, um, mm. I proceed to move forward, but the whole time I'm just poker facing. Mm. What a reaction, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna stop with there. That's, yeah, that's, that's quite an epic moment, yeah. Yeah, what does that um, mean to you? Talk to us about, you know, Faiz, where you're from. What does that moment mean to you? Yo, I, I grew up, I moved a lot. Mm. But my my main stationary place was um, Rocklands, which was plain. And then I lived in Westgate for a little while. And then I moved, I moved around quite a bit. But um, always knew that I was gonna do something that was gonna mean something someday. Mm. I always, I always stayed true to that. I always, always believed that from a young age. And um, I thought I was gonna be a soccer player, um, <laughs> as as many of us do growing up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, turns out my talents lie elsewhere. Uh. So what I found was that um, with moving so often is I, I, I moved in many different uh, many different moved to many different areas and here's what I want to say is there's something that we refer to as the the Mitchell's plane mentality yeah um, I think a, a big portion a big portion of the people that's going to see this is going to be the Mitchell's plane crowd so I'm going to talk directly to them yeah. Um, there's something called the Mitchell's Plain mentality. And to achieve any sort of success in life, it's about your mentality. Yeah. It's, it's, all, it's all mindset. Before you can do anything in reality, you need to do it in the mind first. Mm -hmm. So um, I, because I moved around so often, I, um, I lived in places like Gordon's Bay, I lived in Strand, I lived in Kenworth, I lived in Claremont. So I got to see different mindsets and different perspectives, yeah. different ways people approach different things, um, the, the way people approach money, the way people approach their dreams, the way people approach education, the way yeah. people approach eating. Every, 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 every facet of living I got to experience in mm. different environments. So I've, I've been very fortunate in my life to have seen that. Um, obviously, these things that I did lose, um, of course, yeah. you know, I, I didn't have a stable home where I just wake up, see the same people. I didn't have a, a consistent routine. So yeah. I, did, I did lose things here and there, but I, I, I'm happy for what I gained. And yeah. um, here's what I noticed is that 
we as um, myself specifically, um, I I remember what it was like growing up. We would go out, we would, when I went to school in Mitchell's Plain, I would wake up in the morning, go to school, get home from school, play the whole day, come in at six o'clock, do my homework, have supper, go to bed. Uh, that was the routine. But then I started seeing how other people also live their lives and mm. uh, what they, what they, how they would run their days. They'd wake up in the morning, exercise in the morning, go mm. to school, after school, do after classes, after that, practice a sport, after that, uh, learn an instrument, then go home, um, do homework, eat supper, have family time, and then shut off. So if you look at the, the one day, Versus the yeah. other day, exactly. You think yeah. to yourself, what what all could I accomplish if exactly. I had lo- started living my life like this at a younger age? Yeah. Um, if I look at some of the habits that was developed, they had mm-hmm. days that started at at six a.m. and finished at six p.m. seven p.m. Yeah. So they were used to a certain lifestyle. They were used to that. Monday to Friday, I work from 6 a.m. to mm-hmm. 6 p.m. It's just, let's just put it out like that. Yeah. So the mindset is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to form myself with positive habits. Yeah. So that, that's just something I want to say is it makes a big difference, but habits is what we do every day. Yeah. So it's the continuous thing that we, we play over and over again. And some of the habits that I had to break that stuck with me from when I was a child was very difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, waking up early, we, we on a weekend my habit would be uh, go to on a weekend stay up late hours of the of the Friday night, and then <laughs> yeah. sleep till 10, 11, 12, 1, <laughs> Wake up, start my day extremely slow. Play outside, play uh, PlayStation. Um, whatever it is that I did to entertain myself. But yeah. the time it was 6 p.m., I had only just, my mind had only just started to wake up. Uh, and I would no relive that cycle all the way to Sunday. Yeah. So, but then I've also slept over at friends' house, houses, um, and what they'll do is they go to bed at 10 p.m. Mm. And I thought to myself at the time, I was thinking to myself, why? It's weekend. Why would you go to? But the next morning, they woke up at 8 a.m. and rode bikes for two hours and came home, had breakfast, and that was just the start of their day. Mm. So the way we, we, we conduct ourselves makes a big difference in yeah. how much time we get to be productive. Yeah. Sometimes, if you look at some of the things that we eat, um, and this is something, this is a big thing to me, hot chips and Gatsby's and, mm-hmm. and those kind of things. <laughs> so popular. You find yeah. it on every it corner. Liquor, man. It's liquor, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's liquor, but it guarantees three hours of you not wanting to move. Yeah. And that's, that's actually so incredible. Yo. Mm. When, you, when you compare that, to going out and in if you look at someone and you think to yourself i'm gonna go out and have a salad and maybe a chicken breast maybe a chicken caesar salad for an example mm-hmm. and you're sitting across from that person eating your delicious burgers with all the sauce running out think to yourself why is this dude eating a salad this is i would never but <laughs> in an hour from now that dude's going to feel great. He can run up a mountain, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to feel sluggish. Uh, yeah. So I'm just, I'm making some comparisons to, to let you know how far my mind has traveled. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's, I, I've opened myself up to different realities. Yeah. And um, because of that, I can choose one that makes the most sense to me. And because yeah. of my productivity, I can achieve more. So to me, one of the biggest things that I blame my productivity on, uh, my success on, is being able to be productive and healthy decision making. Yeah, and and let's talk about that healthy decision making phase. Like how, 
what would you say <laughs> what advice would you give to someone that's currently caught up maybe in the bad crowd in a bad crowd or you know how do you how, what was the turning point for you to decide look i'm going to change my life was it just you know you know starting to surround yourself with with people that are the same mind of you how did you deal with breaking up those friendships that maybe you know deterred you from you know achieving your goals and what's the importance of that talk to us about 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 your social networks and things that you then formed you know to inf- to influence you to get to where you are today at at most important um there's a a quote that says show me your friends and i'll show you where you'll be in 5 years yeah uh that is absolutely 100% true mm. and because i was um i i take a lot of inspiration from quotes yeah and uh yeah, me too, yeah. <laughs> i think that that from a young age i started doing that already like i was starting to read up about the law of attraction the power of positivity um uh rich dad poor dad and all of these things i was starting to read those type of books yeah. uh, high school already i was I, I was a delinquent in high school and i vandalized things and i broke things but it was because i lacked confidence mm. i lacked confidence self esteem and self worth i didn't know who where i fit in how i fit in where i was headed and I, and what sort of direction i wanted to go in Mm. but i never had a problem standing alone um but i think that is a big problem yeah i think that we we often times look around to our peers for guidance yeah and um if you have for lack of a better word stupid peers you're going to look at stupid leadership mm-hmm. so um okay let's not go with the word stupid let's go with ignorant ignorant mm. because they don't know it yeah so from a young age i decided um i knew what my goal was when i was 16 years old um also be, that being said mma was nothing when i was 16 years old there was no talks people didn't even know what the ufc was yeah, yeah. um when i said I, i wanted to be an mma fighter they said is that that ufc stuff i said I, for the life of me when someone says that i want to pull my hair out <laughs> that the ufc stuff for the amount of times i've heard that uh uh-uh. so my vision was very much interpreted as um it doesn't make sense mm-hmm. it can't make sense it doesn't make sense to a practical mind so when i came forward and approached my parents for example because when you when you reach for goals and things you your yeah. family is going to play a part exactly yeah and um even in when i was even in the efc uh i was sitting one day with my my grandmother um uh mariam beckett if anybody knows her that lady is <laughs> a legend she passed away um um 2016 but besides the point we were sitting in front of the, the after one of my fights and we were talking and um <laughs> she said to me when are you going to go study <laughs> what she <laughs> said what why <laughs> i'm literally loving my dream right yeah. now why would i go study <laughs> so uh uh when it, when it comes to the the relationship with with your family that's always yeah. going to be uh, something that you that you need to show them your vision and you need to exactly. make it very clear exactly. yeah but back to your back to your question we were on the peers um if you want to be something in this life you need to you don't need to know exactly what it is but you need to know what kind of life you'd like to live do you want to do you want to be able to travel yeah. do you want to be able to now i'm not i don't want to talk about material success as if it's the most important thing but i will i will throw it out there because it does yeah. motivate people motivate in this, people, in this yeah. day and age more hmm. money means more choice so let's just i'm just talking from that perspective 
Do you want to be able to sail on a yacht one day? Do you want to be able to drive your own sports car or in a sports car? Do you want to be able to feed the hungry? Do you want to be able to build houses for the people that don't have? I mean, even to do the... Do you... Exactly. Because mm. of... If you want to achieve those things, you have to... You have to set those goals. Yeah. And in order to set those goals, you have to look around and notice where people that sit on the corner ends up. Look at where they end up because it's not that difficult. Go go have a conversation with your local thug that's always asking you for two that. Go have a conversation with that dude. I guarantee you that dude has got knowledge that you don't know and you can learn from him. If not from what he's gained in life, from his mistakes. And he will tell you straight that this that the the life that I loved, if I yeah. could love it again, I would not love it this way. Yeah. Because I have wasted my existence on petty things. Yeah. See, usually what happens is something goes wrong in life early on. And because of that, we get angry. And mm-hmm. misplaced anger turns to the wrong friendships, turns to you putting yourself in a predicament that you don't need to be. Mm-hmm. There's no, if you, if you are, let's say you are, you are a slow learner for example, and you struggle at school and you get put down all the time and you're sick mm-hmm. of getting bullied, there's no way that you taking a gun and killing somebody is going to solve that problem. There's mm-hmm. no way that if you're going to take a hit of heroin that your life is going to get any better from there. So realize that as soon as you can. I know it's quite, ah, let's love with the Owen. No, no. Take pictures like this. <laughs> no. Honestly, education is the key. Hmm. Thank you. That, that would be my advice. Is stay yeah. away from people that don't have a vision, create yeah. a vision, and just start to cultivate a life that you can look, that you can someday look back on and be proud of. Yeah. Advice is like, there's, uh, I mean, I know we, <laughs> we, we, may, we might be a bit pushed for time, but uh, if you have a bit of time, maybe we can still chat. Um, we can still chat a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to chat EFC specifically now and, and MMA. You know, a lot of people, as you said, a lot of people don't know what that is about. You know, and 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 here you are making a career out of it. You are pursuing. You are living your dream, as you said. You know, talk to us a bit about what is MMA um, and and in that in the EFC in particular. Um, I know. I mean, from my idea, you know, it being mixed martial arts. And I just, and, and I see, you know, these different weight classes and stuff that you guys are fighting in and mm-hmm. you know, things like phantom weight and welterweight and, you know, you know, the lightweight, yeah. the weight and heavyweight, but now you get other kinds of weights and why is those things so important? Maybe you can talk to us a bit about, about that, you know? Um, yeah. So, 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 so your, your career as an MMA, uh, mixed martial artist, your time in the EFC and what's it all about? You know, I could do three hours on that topic. <laughs> I could, I could, I could do four hours, hours on that topic. I, I could. <laughs> <laughs> but let me, let, me, um, let me just be straight up and, and, and um, give, you, give you the, underst- give you the, the sort of a little bit of history on the sport and then yeah the rules and um, sort of what that surrounds. And then I'll start to go into my career. So everybody wants to know, um, wanted to know at a certain time what the best martial art in the world was. Um, Mm. They took, uh, they took martial artists in the, that were the best disciplines, the best practitioners from all over the world. So, you had your boxing, you had kickboxing, you had uh, karate, you had taekwondo, you had um, uh, Greco-Roman wrestling, you had Olympic style wrestling, you had judo, you had jiu-jitsu, you had ninjutsu, you had, the list goes on and on, sambo. Yeah. There's, there's, there's so much martial arts that have existed throughout time. And mm-hmm. um, some of them have stuck around, some of them have been weeded out of existence. Um, 
But basically what they did was they took the best practitioners from all around the world. They said, okay, boxing guy versus wrestler, who's going to win? Mm. And uh, what they found was that it wasn't the guy that, it wasn't one martial art. It yeah. was the martial artist who knew, who had the most knowledge of different martial arts. He did the best. Yeah. Because he was able to handle himself in any fight. So, actually, actually a boxer's own, if you look at a boxer, if a boxer, a boxer primarily just punching. Mm. And um, if you only learn how to punch, you're only going to know how to block punching. Yeah. Someone starts kicking you all of a sudden, you're going to have no idea what to do. <laughs> they kick you like so, that, that front kick of yours, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, exactly. <laughs> that guy was a boxer. That's, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So what 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 happens is, um, they started realizing they needed to evolve. The more the competition happened, the more they realized they needed to evolve, and uh, then MMA became its own sport. It became mixed martial arts. Yeah. And then there was sort of a blueprint set up um, based on which martial arts had success. So boxing was very successful, kickboxing was very successful, karate, uh, jujitsu, and wrestling. They were most Muay Thai, most um, MMA styles are surrounding those martial arts because mm. they just did well. So MMA became its own martial art thing. Um, that's that's literally just scraping the surface. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine, yeah. Mm. And um, so that's how the UFC came into existence. And then my, my career with the EFC mm. started when I was 22, 22. I started when I was 22, um, which is... In my opinion, it's a good age. Um, I wouldn't have mind starting a little bit earlier, but I needed to learn the lessons that I needed to learn. And yeah. also, at, at the same time, everything that happens in life, we mustn't compare ourselves to other people. Exactly. Our journey unfolds the way our journey unfolds. So, yeah, exactly. Anyways, I ended up there at 22. 22, I had been knocking everybody out on the amateur circuits. <laughs> I did very well in kickboxing. Um, I was a three-time champ, four-time champion in kickboxing. Um, I was undefeated in kickboxing before okay. I moved into um, into MMA. Yeah. And then I came into MMA, and all of a sudden, the EFC loved me. I was um, I was very, I was marketed very well. I was, um, they loved me for their brand. I did, I did, I got good opportunities very early on. But also, with that came a lot of learning, a lot of pressure, and um, quite a bit of beatings. Man. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was just given say, and received. Yeah, yeah. Because you are a stand-up so, fighter. Are you a, you a stand-up fighter, and now you all of a sudden had, because I mean, you did kickboxing, um, and you yeah. were there, and all of a sudden you had to wrestle, and you had to be, you know, grappling and stuff. I had, I'll, I'll tell you, I had about, I had about three months, uh, Grappling experience when I actually fought for the first time in the EFC. That's that's not even there's no joke when when we talk about because I'm fighting guys with years of experience. I mean, yeah, yeah. if you learn, if you go to a jiu-jitsu class yeah. and you do five classes, you already a lot more superior than someone that's that's done no classes. Yeah. So within within three months, you might be get jujitsu twice a week. You can takes you a certain amount of time to learn things mm -hmm. and then re reuse them to understand them. So I was very very much beginner, and yeah. I paid for that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, when I was fighting amateurs, I was knocking guys on cold. And it would have been wrong for me to continue fighting amateurs because I, I was just hurting them. Exactly. Yeah. So um, mm. then I took my first loss. 
Um, and it was probably one of my better fights because uh, I just would not be stopped. I, threw, I had 13 stitches on my face, almost had my arm broken, um, almost knocked a guy out. Uh, it was a it was a it was a tough it was a tough fight. Yeah, yeah. But I came back. I think just on that fight. Every time. I think that again. I, think I watched that. I think I watched that fight. I don't know. I don't know if it's the. I, I wanted to show you one. And I wanted maybe to get your comment on on that one. So maybe if I can if I can share my screen with you again, and and maybe yeah, go for it. You know, I mean, you're talking about this now, and um, maybe it's not this one. Can I just? There's a moment for listening here. I just want to yeah. add that in. If sometimes when you do things, not always is everything gonna go your way. Yeah. There's no success without failure. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Thank you, thank yeah. you so much for that. At this moment, yeah. Uh, it, you are, it, yes. Look at how you are bending. <laughs> yeah. And you come back. Yes. And you smile. <laughs> and that's what my face look like. <laughs> oh, my word. Incredible. <laughs> uh, uh. No, after that first round in that fight, he, I had taken um, uh, I'd taken quite a beating. And yeah, yeah. what I was noticing is that there was a difference in the look in his eyes. Mm. He, he wasn't as... He didn't know what it was going to take to put me away. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was smiling. I was smiling because I was like, this guy has taken everything he has to, yeah. to try and beat me and he's failed. He doesn't look happy about himself. He <laughs> looks like he wants to give up. Yeah, and yeah. if I had given him a strong enough reason, I believe he would have. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, how much experience in grappling did you have at this point? <clears throat> Because I mean, if you, if you, if you talking about, if I'm, if I'm going to be, you know, I've, I've been, I've been uh, taking this approach where I've been. Every time I'm having an interview, I'm letting out more and more information. Yeah. And, um, I think I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it like it is. Mm. At the time, um, I, I was I was grappling twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, my instructor at the time was a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Gary Gerhard. Mm -hmm. um, he's a he's German, so I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> um, he was a blue belt, and he was my main instructor. Mm -hmm. And um, when people hear me say what I just said now, they're gonna be in shock. <laughs> Because ask, what does that he, he was he was very yeah here's one thing I will say he was very well studied and he worked mm. specifically on my weaknesses, but at that point I didn't even learn defensive jujitsu I was only learning defense I mean I, I didn't even learn offensive jujitsu I was only learning defense mm. because I was literally starting from grassroots yeah so by that time I. I had probably like six months, six months grappling experience. Um, no gi work, no gi work. Um, mm. A lot of my grappling partners weren't as experienced as I was. No, that's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Some <laughs> of them, half of them were, half of them wasn't. Uh -uh. So it was, um, it was whoever was available to work with me at the time. Yeah. So, um, I didn't know how to defend takedowns. I didn't know how to stand back up. Um, I didn't know how to sweep somebody. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to shoot submissions off my back. I didn't yeah. know how sure. to take somebody down properly. I, there was a lot of things that still needed to develop, but yeah. me being who I am, I just took challenges on without yeah. even waiting. I just, I just was ready to jump in and I was ready to do it. And no, regardless of anything, defended, defended I just, I just wanted to get in there. What was that? A, that was, that wasn't an armor. That was a Kimura lock. Was that a? That's a Kimura lock, yeah. Yeah. 
And you feel it like a I mean, I watched your other your other fight with uh, I think it was Billy Wilson, and I mean he had you in a guillotine, and you got out of a guillotine. Yeah. You ended up knocking him out. Um, and <laughs> MMA. I, you, sorry, go on, go on, go on. No, no, I mean just in MMA, you know how important is you know the mindset when you are in that moment of you know you 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 took your first punch and or you maybe. You now at the you know you 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 at risk now and now you have to come you know you have to come back and bounce back from that. Um, what goes through your mind? How do you get out of a situation like that? And you know, you ended up. I, I don't know if it was a technical knockout or a knockout, but uh, I, I think the fight ended. They were all. I think you gave him like two elbows and a few knees, and the fight was over. Oh, with with Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like two elbows and about. Four knees, five knees. Should have that been stopped crazy. earlier. Yeah, but yeah. It was hard to see him if he was out or not. Mm. Um, if I had known he was out, I would have, I would have stopped. Yeah. Uh, but, but what goes through your mind when you're times. down under and you have to come back? You know, in a fight. How do you make that? Um, you know what? It's. I'm gonna go back to what I said in the beginning. It's a habit. Yeah. It's all through. That's how I train. I don't, I don't train and I thrive and I'm doing well all the time and I'm winning and I'm successful and and it's great and I love it and I'm and all my techniques were. That is never what training is like. Yeah. Training is a fight for survival. <laughs> training is me being at the end of my much fighting to get through something. That is what training is. Training is. A consistent me pushing my limits, me acknowledging that I can go further than what I'm go- what I went yesterday, and just keep pushing and keep keep going from that. So, because that is a habit, because I have taken, I love my life that way. Mm. I I train that way. I'm I'm my mind is is programmed to function that way. I respond that way to all adversity. I respond to adversity by embracing the fact that I am willing to die in this moment right here. You see, when a human being is met with a situation where they are going to either um, die or survive something, yeah. they tend to survive. And I, I am an extreme person, I'm, I'm quite intense, I'm always looking for that line. Always. I, I don't go to training and not look for that line. No. I will, I'm, I'm also someone that consciously makes things difficult for myself. Mm. As, as much as I can, I, I, I increase the level of, of difficulty while I'm struggling already. If I'm, if I'm running on a treadmill, and the treadmill's on 14 kilometers, and I'm running at that pace, and it's and I'm starting to die now, but I know that I'm in the third round now. Hey, I'm supposed yeah. to pick it up here. I'm yeah. pushing that treadmill to 15. Re- regardless yeah. of how I'm feeling, regardless of anything, regardless of if I can't physically walk on my feet, I will use my hands to go and get it. That's yeah. my mentality is that, it's me moving towards my goal and nothing yeah. nothing and no one is going to be able to stop me. Yeah. That's Just that's my mindset. Feeling the mindset, yeah. Just, I don't care if I can't breathe, mm-hmm. if if I can't breathe through my nose, if I can't smell, if my vision is blurry. Let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through something um, yeah. and I'm going to tell you what it feels like. When you get put into a choke, now, I've been choked out on live television um, with 20 million people watching and my family being present also, yeah, just okay. on top of that, just some added on information. But when you yeah. go into a choke, what happens is they cut off your blood supply and uh, blood stops running to your brain and it basically reboots. That's what being choked out is like. Yeah. But what happens is all of a sudden, there's a warm feeling that comes up your back. It's a warm, very 
numb feeling. And that alone is scary. Yeah. Then sure. the room starts fading away. Blackness. And there's a little bit of vision, 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 until eventually it becomes nothing. Yeah. So that's what it's like being put to sleep. I will still continue to fight. If the choke is in 100%, yeah. I will still continue to fight if I've got that much eyesight left. I won't give up until my lights completely switch off. Mm. Until I can't see anything anymore. I, I've, I've accepted yeah, I, I that. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Till death do us part. <laughs> that's what I say when I walk in. When I, when I look at my opponent, that's what I think to myself. Yeah. Or death do us part. Or when the ref decides to save your life. Whenever. Yeah. <laughs> Either or. But if but, you don't have that mindset, yeah. what will happen is when your moment comes to finish a fight, yeah. you will not be able to because your mercy mindset will kick in. Yeah. If you, if you, when you've knocked somebody down and you're punching somebody's head, waiting for the ref to stop the fight, if you have a second of mercy, there's a chance that, that guy could survive. Yeah. Yeah. On the on the opposite, vice versa, if you are not used to dealing with discomfort and someone starts punching you when you in the ground on the ground, you'll stop moving, curl into a ball and shell up. And you lose when that happens. Mm. So the mindset needs to start early on and it needs to be uh, habitual thing yeah and that's i mean i've seen i've seen some moments like that in fights also where you know the guy's busy going for the tko and uh, and, and then you know either maybe didn't hear that if properly saying stop and then stopping and then you know it could be the end of the run and then next round the guy could come back and even win the fight probably if you give them that chance but um but is you're now you're now the efc bantamweight champion what does that mean for you what is, what, how has things changed for you? Um, and maybe what is next from a point of view of being champ? Um, I've got a target on my head, first of all. Who's Everybody next? wants the belt. Of course. <laughs> Everybody wants the belt. Everybody's calling my name. Everybody's got something to say. Yeah. Everybody's going to fight me. Everybody's going to beat me. Everybody's going to become the new <laughs> champion. And everybody's got that mindset. Um, that's the way I like it. <laughs> the way I like it is having a bunch of above average men, um, men that have achieved some form of excellence to become, yeah. to have been, to have been, to be a professional athlete is no joke. Yeah. So, um, I have people that have their whole mindset on. I need to go beat this guy. Yeah. And behind that, I could take it two ways. I could take it as if the world of pressure is on my shoulders, or I could take it as if I need to evolve consistently. I need to be ready for when this opportunity comes for me to yeah. fight this fight. Um, so the target on my head is number one. <laughs> um, also, there's a lot of respect and admiration coming from places that I didn't know respect and admiration was. So, um, I have, I'm in the eyes now also in a much bigger way and I have a duty to, to decide how I'd like to portray my image. What kind of image I want to put forward. Do I want to be, um, a champion that says um, that puts out a positive role model effect or do I want to be a champion that puts out a negative role model effect? So I've already decided on where I'd like to go and I need to love my life accordingly. So that's, an, that's another thing. Um, then uh, opportunities have opened up. Uh, everybody wants a piece of the champ. Um, you know, I have to choose where I spend my time accordingly. And then yeah, that's that's basically it. Eh? I don't I don't I don't over glorify it. 
when once I won the belt, I had fun. I celebrated. I I enjoyed it. I I took that in. I soaked up the moment. But to me, I don't walk around with a mindset of uh, I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'll 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 maybe flaunt it when I'm at home and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm joking about it to myself in the mirror. Then I'll flaunt it a little bit. But my mindset is, what's next? Where am I going next? Because if I focus on what's right in front of me, I'm never going to look ahead. Man. And I want to take steps forward. Yeah. So, um, and then lastly, what's next for me? Yeah. Um, what's next for me? First of all, the mindset of me thinking I want a next. That's, that's very big to me. Um, the fact that I want to keep growing. Mm. And then, I want to defend my belt, um, hopefully within this year still. Actually, yeah. you know what? I know I'm going to defend my belt within this year. So there's that. And then um, I'd like to do, some in, do an international fight. I would have liked my first one to be um, this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, with Corona and, and, yeah. and the way things are looking now, I doubt that that's going to be a possibility anytime soon. Mm. But um, I'll keep my, I'll definitely keep that in my prayers. I'll keep my mind sharp to that, and I'll be ready if the opportunity is there. I'm ready. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Yeah. So just to follow up from that, do you think you, uh, do you think Zulu Boy should get the rematch, or are you thinking of new new names? Uh, I, I I mean, people are talking. Um, People are talking Irshad Said. Okay. People are talking uh, what's it? Is, is it Ika Kabesa? I don't know if he's in your weight category. Um, he's a weight class up, so that would be yeah. a, that would be a, a, a double division opportunity there. Yeah. If I was to go Ika uh, uh, I, I like I like the thinking there. You see, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, that double weight uh, champion, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, but who do you think uh, deserves the shot now? I mean, you look at the guys in your in your division. Um, or can you? Can I don't care. If, if, I, if I'm going to be honest, the division was quiet. Mm. The division was so quiet when um, when I was climbing the the ranks. There was nobody was talk. Nobody was there. There was no one there. There was no one even talking about contesting for a title. There was there there was nobody. I carried the division on my shoulders. I went in there and I I continually pulled hype behind the bantamweight division. All of a sudden, when I became champion, contenders started springing out of nowhere. <laughs> so um, guys started dropping down weight classes. Guys started coming up weight classes. Guys started coming out of retirement, things were just, <laughs> it, was absolutely, it was crazy. I was like, okay, okay. They, yeah, yeah. Clearly they want a piece. <laughs> so, um, that's incredible. What, what I think now is, you know what? I don't even, I've never cared. Mm. I've never really cared who and what and where and when. I've taken oh, fights yeah. on two weeks notice. I've taken yeah. fights on, a week notice. I've taken fights on 24 hours notice. I know the 24 hour notice one. Yeah, yeah. I I don't care. I I want to fight. You. That's that's it. I, I want to fight and I want to continue going to the next level and mm. achieve, 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 achieve until it's UFC. Yeah. However, you just answered my next question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the game works in this way. Yeah. Um, it's not just about winning. It's about who you be. Yeah. So I going from a fight like Zulu Boy to dropping to somebody that has a, a record that is minimal mm. is not gonna do wonders for my career. Yeah. I need somebody with a big name. I need somebody that's done something in the sport. So mm. I need a worthy opponent that's that's gonna be if I beat this person, it's going to be UFC worthy. Yeah. So that's where I'm looking at. So that's I need to go and find that guy. Yeah. Whoever that guy may be, could be Irshad Sayed, could be Iga Kabesa, could be some of the guys that's in the in the division, Sylvester Chimfumbu, um, 
whom whomever is becomes available and um yeah is right for the time being i'm not going to be too picky about opponents uh because of corona yeah. so i'll i'll have to just take what i can get mm. um but i don't just want more records on my on my on my um more wins on my record i want notable wins and yeah. i want it's going to mean it's going to mean something at the end of the day man. yeah you know muhammad ali f- had 92 fights or something of the sort 92 97 96 something somewhere along the mm-hmm. how many of muhammad ali's opponents does the world know mm-hmm. maybe five so i don't want to have 90 guys that i fight that don't mean anything Yeah. I want to I want to fight guys that's worth something. You know the big names are. So we'll we'll see. We'll see how yeah. it unfolds. The the yeah. game is always changing, always unfolding. It's mm. sometimes these these guys that's going to be talking a lot, they available, they available, then when it comes time to make the fight, they haven't been training, they need more time, the money's in the right, um whatever whatever <laughs> excuses people come up with. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to see how time presents itself but there is there is enough guys for me to be able to compete yeah. as soon as the first event opens up yeah thank you so much and for lastly before we before we drop off any advice that you have to someone that's maybe watching this interview as a young person that you know, that are, are, are maybe you know faced by any sort of negativity whether it's by family friends naysayers um caught up in something What kind of advice do you have for them in pursuing their dreams? Um First things first, it's your life. You have to love it for you. It's it's the only it's the only way that success is going to mean anything. If you love a successful life for other people, that's not a life of success. So, first things first, recognize that you have the power over your own life. Mm. The ball is in your court. Don't put the ball in someone else's court. Because if you put the yeah. ball in someone else's court, your life will be dictated to you. And that uh, that someone else can be a teacher, that someone else can sometimes be a parent, that someone else can be the friends you hang out with, that someone else can be your mindset. Don't Don't ever underestimate the power of the mind. Everything starts with mental strength. That's that's all success you hear, no matter who you hear talking, it mm. all starts in the mind. Nurture your mind. Feed your mind. Treat your mind with the utmost respect. Think about what you put in there and as a result you'll see what you get out. believe in yourself don't ever ever give up success failure is part of success don't take don't take those blows as if it's the last shot that you'll ever have you fall down you get back up and remember the only way that you don't achieve your goals is if you decide to give up if you never stop you never stop winning the journey is 90% of the value the winning is only the, the 10%. I can tell you from experience the journey makes you who you are. Mm. Your life your relationship with you is exceptionally important. Treat it that way. Who it's not about what you get or what you achieve it's about who you become. that's what matters at the end of the day be true to you be happy to be you keep being positive so oh, that is that is so inspirational i am even inspired by that and i mean it coming from you you know someone who has you know come from where you, someone who comes from where you are from and who have risen to the top you know and you know and is still continuing and still giving back to our communities and you know i saw i saw some of the stuff that you are currently working on which just just let me just pause you Don't forget to give back. Don't forget to give back. Don't yeah. forget where you came from. Don't forget to give back. Yeah. And and sorry, you, 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 well, thank you so much, Faiz, and, and and thank you for 
you know, being, you know, when, when people talk about being the people's champ, I really see that in you. And um, I wish you all of the best in your career, you know, in the UFC, in the EFC, in, in your future plans. Um, and thank you so much for accepting this invitation and for chatting through us on Aspiration Inspiration. And, you know, uh, we, 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 we look forward to the responses and hopefully we can inspire someone else to also achieve their goals. Because for, 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 for me, for us at Aspiration Inspiration, it's always about aspiring to inspire before we expire because there's so much negativity going, there's so much negativity going on, but we have such incredible positive stories from people such as yourself. And thank you so much for joining. Is there anything else you'd like to leave with us before we uh, part ways? I love, I love this, I love the slogan. Aspire to to inspire before you expire. That's that's beautiful. Well done, there. That's that's Thank awesome. You. That's so awesome. Yeah. Um, I wish you all the I wish you all the success um, that you'd like to achieve. I hope that more doors continue to open up for you. Um, Thank you very much. Sure. Keep keep pushing. Keep striving, and your work means something to somebody. Thank it you. always does.